so excited to have you here today. And normally I would actually do this in my Facebook group, but I'm doing it on my page today because I think a lot of you are going to be super excited to hear from my guest today, Melissa Rautenberg. So Melissa Rautenberg is a digital nomad. We'll be talking a lot about that today. Welcome, Melissa. So happy to have you here. Thank you for having me. I'm going to try not to move as much as possible because hashtag digital nomad problems with the Wi Fi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. We will. We've been uh, working through some technology issues, but I think we've got it figured out. So um, I'll just give you a little bit of an introduction. So, Melissa, she is strategic advisor for the agency guy. And she match makes brands with the right marketing firm based on capabilities, culture, and strategy. She also co-hosts an amazing podcast with her husband, Stephen. And I've actually been honored to be a guest on it. And it's called The Creative Hustler. And it's a great resource for new and budding entrepreneurs. Also, she's co-founder of Latin Code where her husband and business partner handle a handful of branding and digital marketing clients in an interim CMO capacity. So I that was the bio I wanted to share with you all. But uh, maybe you can just tell us, Melissa, in your own words about yourself and a little bit about your journey and what you're what you're up to these days. Yeah, absolutely. So just to let everybody know, your podcast is due to air this month. So look out for that. Woo! Yay! Um, <laughs> so Stephen, and, Stephen, my husband, uh, and I, we own our own digital marketing uh, consultancy where we help large brands um, basically organize their in-house marketing team. And if they don't have an in-house marketing team, then we bring in the right teams to do the work, um, depending on their scope and their budget. Um, and we only deal with a handful of clients at a time because we really like to immerse ourselves in their culture of the companies and become partners with those companies. Um, and then whatever leads that we have uh, outside of our expertise or outside of our bandwidth, we are strategic advisors with the agency guy. So that's a great resource for us to leave no lead behind, basically, and to help uh, prospects find the right marketing firms, depending on uh, their capabilities, budget, uh, their culture, their location. Um, so it, it really helps us still still help brands make smarter branding and marketing decisions without actually being in the front lines of their work. So the agency guys are a great resource for brands looking for all types of different marketing firms from SEO, marketing, video content, uh, branding, depending on where you are. You could be on the East Coast, you could be on the West Coast, you could be, you know, in Kansas. We have uh, about 200 eight preferred vendors uh, that we work with. So, and then the podcast, the Creative Hustler podcast is really just our behind the scenes journey of mm -hmm. our lifestyle, career, our businesses, our partners, colleagues, and you were on that, we're in the mastermind together. Um, mm -hmm. And it's really just showcasing our behind the scenes and, and our connections really. Yeah, so I wanted to ask you though, how you actually got into having your own business and also how, what it's like being a digital nomad. Um, actually, how many countries, so where have you been in the past three to four months? Because I feel like every time I talk to you, you're somewhere else. <laughs> I'm in a different location, that is the truth. So we gave up our apartment in downtown San Diego October 1st and from there we went to the East Coast we were there for a short period of time we did a, a, um, a branding summit with one of our clients open eye global and then from from there from the East Coast we took off to Europe for three months so we were in Europe for 89 days because after 90 days you need a visa and we thought about getting a visa. 
we were in, we were all over Italy and Germany. So we were in Milan. We were in the Italian Alps. Uh, we went to Sardinia, Sicily. We actually did stop in Switzerland for a little while. We were in Germany for nine days. We were in Rome for a little while. Um, and we spent a majority of our time in Europe in Sicily. So we did six weeks of backpacking just all around. And then we did six weeks in Sicily, which was gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. We hooked up with a co-working space called Impact Hub. I don't know if you've ever heard them, they're, they're worldwide, uh, but they have an amazing space. And we got really ingrained in the culture in Sicily. We stayed in Syracuse, which was absolutely fantastic. The co-working space was amazing. So yeah. the Italian culture is awesome. You know, they're all about food and wine and family and friends. And I try to stop doing that, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they, for a long, the co-working space. Uh-oh. Oop, did we lose me? There's a little bit of a lag. Um, again, we were talking about this earlier because <laughs> one of the things that I'm sure you deal with is you probably don't always have a super stable internet connection <laughs> depending on where yes. in the world you are, right? So um, yes. we're, we're going to see how this works, but um, keep going. So we, it, Sicily was fantastic. It was more about the culture and the co-working space that we had really solidified our yeah. space there. We really loved it. But then we came back to the East Coast. We were on the East Coast for six weeks. And then we were in San Diego for about a month. That's where I saw you. We went to that yeah. awesome coffee shop. I forget the name of it, but I loved it. And then oh. San Diego, we went from, we went to Nevada. We had some mm -hmm. conventions there. We went to Utah, and now we're in Divide, Colorado, literally in the mountains. There's about 127 people here mm -hmm. in this little town, and uh, <laughs> it's snowing. It's snowing outside. My car is covered, and the Wi-Fi is iffy. <laughs> okay, okay. So, what what would you say is the the best part of being like a digital nomad? I would have to say the opportunities of meeting new people in new spaces and um, and just exploring new cultures. Um, so one of the things that we really try to do when we travel is we try to center it around business and different conventions and events and seminars and expos that we can be a part of, whether we are leading those workshops and expos or whether we are uh, just attending them. It's it's finding new places, finding new connections and networks in mm -hmm. in new place in new places. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so obviously, like I think you're a lot of people would look at you, Melissa, and they'd be like, "Oh my gosh, you're living the dream." Uh, what if if someone wanted to become a digital nomad like yourself? how would you guide them and, wh and what would you say to them so that in terms of tips or, or strategies that to actually be able to to do something like that that's a good question so one thing we like to tell people is digital nomadism being a digital nomad is not a job you have to have a career you have to have a specialty that you already own and a network of an a network and an audience that already knows your work so yeah. before there and that's funny you say that because when we started the podcast the creative hustler podcast we interviewed a lot of digital nomads and a lot of the time they were just so what do you, you know tell us about yourself and what it is that you do and they would say oh i'm a digital nomad and I would say, well, what does that actually mean? You know, like, what is your career? What is your specialty? What do you thrive in? What's your expertise? So you have to have a, a solid foundation of a network, clients. Um, and, and that starts in one place. You know, that starts with face-to-face -face networking in where you live right now. And that starts with, put, you know, joining groups and, 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 networking that way as well and like really really 
just putting yourself out there. Um, I would prepare yourself for days for, for days to just not go your way. Like here I am right now in Divide, Colorado. And the one thing that I asked this woman before I got here was, is your internet stable? Because if it's not stable, we're going to have to leave. Uh, that's the one thing I need. I just need one thing. Um, right now, I don't even have cell service. I If I shut off the Wi-Fi on my phone, I don't even have cell service. So the Wi-Fi needs to be on in, intact. And that's something Stephen and I learned years ago when we were traveling through Europe. And we just thought it was going to be like the U.S. You just hop into a coffee shop. You get Wi-Fi. You're good to go. Expectation a little bit lower than what we're used to. Yeah. Yeah. So you would recommend... If if someone wanted to be a digital nomad, that first they would build their business in one location, do a lot of face to face networking, have a solid set of clients, and then they could potentially be in a position where they could do their calls and webinars and all of that online. Yeah, I would definitely say that you want your clients and you want your audience to know what you're all about before you start traveling and have Wi-Fi issues. You know, I mean, if you start bringing on clients as you're traveling and you have Wi-Fi issues or time zone problems, then it's going to look like you're a mess to work with. Right. So, um, you know, being able to have a solid foundation of clients that that understand that, that your work is really you are really great at your work. Um, that needs to be what that needs to be first. I mean, you need to build a solid foundation with your business before you just take off running around. Yeah. So for people who look at what you're doing and they say, Oh, I could never do that. Like that would be really cool, but <clears throat> that just wouldn't be possible because yeah, like I have to meet people face to face and um, I just, like they can't envision themselves in that situation, what would you tell them? I think if you already can't see yourself in the situation, don't do it <laughs> because it is not for the faint at heart at all. Okay. It is absolutely not for the faint at heart. Mm -hmm. um, if you're like, oh, I, 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 I can't see myself doing that. I don't know if I could do that. Um, I mean, it's twofold. Number one, if you're already iffy about doing something like this, and let me tell you, it's not easy, then then don't do it. But if you really want to do it, but you're like, I don't know how to do it, that's a different situation. I would say put your fears aside and just go for it and really start to plan it out and, and connect with digital nomads and other people who are doing their thing so that you can know what to expect when you're out there in the field and when, you're, when you are traveling around. And like I said before, Make sure your expectations are low because they're not, things don't always go your way when you're traveling around. Yeah, yeah. So what would you say um, are, have been, maybe you can share an opportunity or two that has come up through your travels that would not have been possible if you had just stayed in one place? That is a great question. Um, I go to a lot of events. I've been to events in Milan. I've been to events in Sicily. I've been to events in Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Denver, Utah, um, Nevada. And when I start telling people what I'm doing and first of all, you know, what, what my, what my business is, that that's one thing that opens up a conversation. But when I start telling them about what I'm doing, running my business on the go while traveling so that I can meet new people and new, new spaces and new networks, it's very intriguing to people and they want to follow me just because they want to follow the journey. And the opportunities that have arised are, I've, okay, so this is a great example. I interviewed a woman on the podcast about a year ago and she lives in New Jersey, but she's right next to New York and she goes into New York all the time for different events. When I was in New York about a couple months ago, I saw that she was interested in a Facebook. I saw that she was interested in an event on Facebook 
And I reached out and I said, hey, I looked at that event that you're interested in. It was with investors and startup companies, which is fantastic. I mean, that's totally a, a great place. Um, investors giving money to startups. And what do startups need? They need branding. They need marketing. They need all of those things. Um, right. So I reached out to her and I said, Nicole, that's her name, Nicole Aloya. I said, Nicole, I saw that you were interested in this in this event and I'm going to go to it. We just signed up for it. And she wasn't even sure she was going to go to it. But as soon as we said that we were going to, she was like, I can't wait to meet you. This is going to be great. She knew the person putting the event on who owned the investment company. And so when we got to the event, she had, she introduced us to everybody. We met a whole bunch of investors. We met the gentleman putting the event on. We met all the startup companies. We, we've started some relationships with them. And then from there, they said, oh, um, well, we're going to have another event next week if you'd like to come. So we went to the next event, and we've created some great relationships from just both of those events. So I think that from playing our game, from having our podcast, having our business, and traveling around and reaching out to people that we've connected with over the past couple of years, we've really opened up some new opportunities that we would have never gotten if we stayed in one place. Yeah, that makes sense. What would you say are, I mean, of course, I think people think about the benefits, you know, being able to to travel and meet new people, like you talked about, new opportunities, um, I'm sure amazing food, which is something I care about. And yes, me too. I should ask you. Yeah, I will ask you this later. A question about food, but um, I what what do you think are maybe some of the considerations that you may or some of the surprises that came up for you as a digital nomad that you wouldn't have known having not gone through the process before. Ooh, a lot of there's been a lot of different surprises. Um, trying to pinpoint a couple. Um, are we looking for good or bad examples here? Either or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Bad great. in the sense that if people want are considering it and need to prepare, um, that I think that would be useful information for them. Yeah, definitely. Um, I would have to say your health, number one, is something that you really need to stay intact with. I mean, as you're as you're floating around, you're touching all these different things, you're coming into contact with a whole lot of people. How do you stay healthy through all of this? And that's one thing that has been huge for me um, along the way. So I really I literally travel with ginger root, turmeric root, lemon. Uh, lemons, literally whole lemons and honey. Like I go to, when we get to different locations, I get the local honey. And that really helps with the different yeah. allergies that I come in contact with. Um, the ginger root and the turmeric really help with my um, digestive system and uh, just keeping me healthy. It's really, really good for you. There's been times where Stephen and I have felt run down and I just build back up with, with, different, with different oils that I have and different... Um, and, and the ginger and the turmeric and the lemon. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's it's the absolute truth. It's really what we've kept ourselves healthy with. Neither one of us have been, you know, knock on wood, uh, all to, like crazy sick along this journey. It's been mm -hmm. six months. But I think health is something that people really need to take into consideration. The way that we travel around, we travel in Airbnbs so that mm -hmm. we can make our own food because eating out is number one expensive and number two, it's unhealthy. Of course, okay. you want to eat out and you want to have different food in different places and test and try that, but you can't do that all three meals. It's it's important to be able to have some kind of normalcy with your diet as you're moving around. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, okay, so the question I had as a foodie, what what has been like the favorite food experience you've had on this journey? Hands down, Sicily. Hands okay. Down. Oh my goodness, Sicily. Germany was a, I, I understand <laughs> that my last name is German and I have German ancestors, but Germany was tough. Germany was tough. <laughs> Munich, Munich luckily is a very international city. So we had some great Thai foods and great Mexican foods and great Italian food. But yeah. hands down, Sicily was my absolute favorite. I mean, it's, it's fresh. 
They have a lot of citrus in their diet. They have a lot of seafood in their diet. Their portions are smaller. Um, it's not so overwhelming. And it, everything's just so fresh. Yeah. Uh, the linguine and clams, and that sounds so just regular, but their linguine and clams are fantastic. I mean, you literally, as you wake up in the morning and you go for a walk, because that's what I would do every morning is just go for a walk around the island, you would see the fishermen coming in. And then when you would go to the restaurant later on, they would say that the sea is the boss. So mm -hmm. it's the un capo, come un capo, the boss. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. So a lot of my audience are moms. And I know that you're not a mom, but if you were to imagine what it would like to be a mom and to be, because that, that is something that I would love to do in the future at some point is to, to be able to use my business and, and travel with my, my children and things like that. What would you say to maybe mompreneurs who are, are interested in doing something like that? Would you give them any advice? Would you give them any warnings or tips? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Um, definitely with the kids, it's going to be tough when it comes to the health. You want to keep them healthy for sure. But also there's a lot of groups out there online that have, look, they have programs for families that can go on these trips. And basically everything's planned out for you where you stay, um, uh, airplane, airplane tickets, where you're staying, activities that you can do in the area, your Wi-Fi. So they have all that stuff set up for you. So it would behoove people to actually look into those types of programs if they want to have some kind of stability, because I know obviously with children, it's all about stability and, and keeping them, um, you know, on a routine basically. Um, and then, you know, same thing, whatever you use to keep your kid healthy, make sure that you have those products with you. Mm hmm. And if you if you were a mom, would you would you like want to take them? Would you want to do a journey like this with them? Absolutely. Stephen and I have talked about it. We've said, so what do we want to do when we have children? We know that we have at least four to five years before they have to go into preschool and before we're really centered. But we've also thought about doing uh, homeschooling while we're traveling. There's mm -hmm. also just recently. I believe that there are, I think there's a lot of kids and families who are doing this. So I think that programs are starting to pop up for kind, for things like this. So, okay. and I think as we get, I think as we get a little bit nor, more nomadic with the, with the opportunities that we have with online marketing and um, online businesses, that that's going to be more and more of a thing. But mm -hmm. I would definitely, I would, I would definitely bring my kids on this journey. I think that they need to do things like this. It makes them more empathetic to other human beings. It gives them culture. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it gives them confidence, you know, and I just think it's all around a good thing to do is to just travel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, on that note, thank you so much, Melissa. This has been like so helpful, so inspiring and if people want to get a hold of you, how can they they reach you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can check me out at thecreativehustler.com or you can just send me a message at melissa at thecreativehustler.com. Just how it sounds is how it's spelled. That is our podcast. If you'd like to be on the podcast, let me know. Um, and that's kind of like our behind the scenes. That's, you know, our journey through life. So if you're want to check it out please do and don't be shy you can find me on instagram facebook linkedin i'm everywhere and there's really only like two melissa routenbergs out there in the world so i'm pretty easy to find awesome well thank you so much for your time melissa and if any of you guys have any further questions or comments feel free to put them in the facebook post and tag Melissa and I'm sure she will get back to you. Thank you so much for having me, Wendy. I appreciate your time. Okay. Bye everybody.